the beam that I want to start with is this one. Um, this beam consists of one pen support at the left end and one ruler support somewhere between the right end and the left end. If we look at this beam, there is not any beam similar to that in this table or in this one. So that makes solving this problem complicated. One way would be ignoring this problem, going to the next question in the exam. Second one would be trying to figure out how we can solve this problem using the tables that we have for this case. Look at that problem again. This problem consists of two main parts. From A to C, it's a simply supported beam, and from C to H, it's a cantilever beam. So I can split this structure into two parts. Let me first focus on the simply supported beam from A to B. This beam is subjected to one force at the middle or somewhere between A and C, which causes bending in this way in the beam. The deflection of this beam is not re directly related to the formation of point H. Remember in this problem, I'm looking for deflection at H. So how can I relate deflection of this beam to deflection of point H? The fact about this problem is the right part of this beam, the cantilever part of this beam, remains as, as a straight line because there is not any moment, there is not any shear acting on the right part. Okay, so that would that would be one straight line, and I can determine how much is the total deflection of the right end because of bending in the left end. Okay, so that is what we call it indirect deflection. I will call that indirect because there is not any direct deflection on the right end, but because of slope of the left beam at point C, the right point moves upward. This is indirectly moves upward, okay? So let me do the calculations here. <clears throat> I need to determine theta at that point, slope of beam at that point, because if I determine how much is theta at that point, I can use trigonometric equation to determine how much is the total deflection going upward. So deflection of this beam. How can I determine deflection of this beam? Let me go to table. Um, the case that I have is this one. I have two options here, theta 1 and theta 2. Which one should I go for? Should I pick up theta 1 or theta 2? I need to determine deflection on the right side of this beam. So that would be theta 2 in this case. So theta 2 would be PAL squared minus A squared divided by 6 LEI. So A in this case is 15 feet, which I need to convert that into inch. I will multiply that by 12. Uh, B is 8 feet. Again, I will multiply that by 12 inch per feet. And EI is given. It is 2.63 times 10 to the 7th. And if I plug the values, all of this, into this equation, that gives me a slope of this beam at that point equal to 0 0.005428 radii. Once I determine this angle, I can determine how much is the total deflection at the very right end, which in this case, I can say tangent of theta is equal to delta H divided by this length from C to H, which is shown by C here. C in this case is 6 feet. Or I can say delta H is equal to C times tangent of uh, theta. So tangent of theta times C. Let me plug these values. Tangent of this small angle times C, which is 6 times 12 inch. That gives me total deflection of the right beam at that point equal to 0 0.3908 inch. And that goes upward. Okay, that was a simple case. Any questions for this case? Again, let me review the concept. The concept was there is indirect deflection in this beam, which would be on the right side. And that caused by deflection of the simply supported beam. All right. Now let me solve a problem which is pretty similar to this, but the force is acting at another point. This beam is pretty similar to the previous case, but instead of having force between A and B, the force is directly acting at point H. How can I determine the formation in this beam? Similar to the previous case, I will split this structure into two parts. There would be one part, simply supported beam, and 
there would be another part which is the cantilever beam. Okay? The point here is, if you look at the original structure, there is not any force acting on the simply supported beam from A to B. So we may say that the simply supported part is not deforming at all, which is not true. Because the force acting on the right side of this structure is causing a moment on this beam. So I need to take care of that moment. I showed this moment by a red color to emphasize that this moment is internal moment. The internal moment which transfers from the cantilever beam to the simply supported beam. Okay? So this beam, the, the beam number one, would be subjected to a moment, internal moment, which in this case is MC. How much would be MC, by the way? How can I determine that moment? That would be force times distance. Force is P, F in this case, times distance, which is C, so that would be F times C. And I know that because of this moment, and because there would be a slope at point C, there would be indirect deformation at point H, which would be this deformation. I will call this deformation as delta H1. So delta H1 is indirect deformation. All right? Now let me consider the second beam. The second beam would be the cantilever beam. In this case, the right part of this beam is not straight line anymore. Why? Because there would be moment on that part. So the right part of beam would be a cantilever beam subjected to one concentrated load at the right end, which causes deflection as we see here. And I will call this deflection as delta H2. So total deflection at this point would be delta H1 plus delta H2. That's it. All right? So now let me do the calculations. First, beam number one. For beam number one, I will get back to table. Which row should I use here? I should go for row three, okay? So I need to pick up this row because that is the case where the simply supported beam is subjected to moment. Okay, now you answer this question. Which theta should I use? Should I pick up theta one or theta two? Remember, I need to determine the slope of beam at the right side of that case. Should I pick up theta 1 or theta 2? Theta 1 or theta 2? I have to pick up theta 1 because that is the case where deflection is occurred at the point where the moment is applying. It doesn't matter if it's on the right side or the left side. You can simply switch this. Look at the problem here. I need to determine the slope of beam at the point where the moment is applying. Okay? So in this case, I need to go and pick up the theta 1 which is ML over 3EI. So theta would be ML over 3EI. I ignore si the sign, and I will take care of the sign later. The moment, the total moment, as we discussed, would be F times C, which F is uh, 30 kips, and C is 6 feet. So if I multiply that, that gives me 2160 uh, kips inch. Total length of beam, the total length of beam number one, as we discussed, would be 23 feet, which I need to multiply that by 12 inch, and divide that by 3 times EI, and that gives me a slope of this beam at that point equal to 0 0.007556 radian. How much would be deformation of this beam? Deformation of the right part of this beam would be delta H, which is delta H1, is equal to length times tangent of this angle. All right? So length is C, tangent of theta C. I will multiply the C by tangent of theta, theta C. And that gives me 6 times 12 as C, and tangent of that small number, which gives me total deflection of delta H1 equal to 0 0.544 downward. How did I determine that goes downward? I determined that based on the fact that if the moment is acting clockwise, the beam bends upward, so the right end goes downward. That is how I can determine sign of deflection in these kind of beams. All right, now I will consider the second part. This is what we need to add to what we had before. Look at this problem. In this case, we just had this indirect deflection, but here, on top of this indirect deflection, we would have one deflection in the cantilever part. So how can I determine that? I need to go to table. I'm looking for deflection at this point, which is 
PL cubed over 3EI. And again, ignore the sign. Delta H2 would be PL cubed over 3EI. What are these parameters? The P is equal to F, which is 30 kips. How much is length? This is length of that part of beam, because I'm talking about this beam, beam number two. I need to determine how much is total length of that beam. Do not consider the length of AB or the entire length of beam. This is the beam that we are discussing about. So length of that beam would be equal to C, which is 6 feet, 6 times 12 inch. So that gives me 30 times 6 times 12 cubed over 3 EI, which gives me deflection of that point equal to 0 0.1419. And I believe everybody knows, everybody agrees that the deflection would go goes downward because of the direction of force. All right? So we have determined indirect deflection caused by slope of the simply supported beam and direct deflection caused by the force acting on the cantilever beam. So total deflection in this system would be delta H1 plus delta H2, which gives me 0 0.6859 going downward. So that is how we can determine deflection of this beam. One important fact about solving this problem is don't ignore the indirect moment. Look at the original figure. There was not any internal moment, MC, but there would be one internal moment because of that force. So I need to see that and take care of that in my calculation. All right? Any questions? If everybody understands this, let me make this problem more complicated. <clears throat> All right? Any questions so far? Okay, if you understand this, let me make it more complicated. This is the third problem from this category, from this family, which is this one. What is this? This is combination of the previous cases. So I simply have one load acting at the simply supported beam and one load acting at the right end. Okay? Here I'm using different numbers, but the concept would be the same. Um, how can I solve this problem? If I know how much would be deflection of this beam, and if I know how much would be deflection of this beam, I can simply add them together because this is a principle of superposition. So I must be kidding that this problem is difficult. It is actually breaking down this problem into three parts. The three elements, the three structures that we need to consider are these three. First, we have one cantilever beam on the right side, which is subjected to one external load. And there would be a simply supported beam. I consider two simply supported beams. Why? Because one of them is the one which is subjected to the concentrated load. And the other one is the one which is subjected to internal moment. Don't forget this little guy here. This is a common mistake. In the exams or in the assignments, those who are not able to answer this problem are mostly missing this part. They forget this little moment over here. First, I will talk about the very top beam, the cantilever beam. The deflection of that beam would be like this. I will call that as delta 1 and that would be PL cubed over 3 EI, and we can plug the values. How much is force? It's 12 kips for this case. How much is length? Length would be length of that beam, not the entire beam, not the left beam. That would be 2 feet. If I plug the values, that gives me 0 0.0145 going downward because of the direction of applied force. This is the way that I take care of sign of deflections. You can consider either downward as positive or upward as positive, but you should be consistent with this sign. All right. Now, let us talk about the second beam and the third beam. <clears throat> For the second beam, because of this load, the deflection would be like this. And similarly, similar to what we had before, we don't need to take care of deflection for this beam, but we need to determine slope of this beam at that point. So I will go and pick up the equation that gives me theta at that point, theta c. Okay, we discussed about that before, so let me just write down the equation. In this case, a would be two feet from the left side, b would be four feet, distance of force to the right side, 
The total length of this beam would be 6 feet, and the force would be 12 kips. And I simply plug the values into this equation, which gives me a slope equal to 0 0.0097. And the direction of that would be counterclockwise. All right, let me do the same for beam number 3. Beam number 3 is the one which is subjected to internal moment. And that would bend like this. That bends upward. And I need to determine theta at that point. Um, similar to what we had before, theta would be ml over 3 ei. For this beam, length would be 6 feet. And moment is caused by 12 kips on the right side. So that would be 12 times 2 feet, which is distance of force to point C. So that gives me 24 kips feet. And if I plug the values, I will come up with 0 0.0218 radian. In this case, theta is clockwise. It is opposite to the direction of previous slope. All right. <clears throat> so, so far, I have determined the slope of this beam. And I am ready to determine how much is the total indirect deflection. Let me first talk about beam number two. On the right side, that remains a straight line. Delta prime two is this angle, theta two times this distance, which is two feet. So that would be upward. That would be negative in this case. And for beam number three, that goes downward, which is positive, and the value of delta prime three would be theta three times two feet. And I can determine how much is the total deflections. So total indirect deflection, which I call that delta prime, is delta prime one plus delta prime two plus delta prime three. So that would be theta three minus theta two times L one, which is two feet length of the cantilever part. And that gives me total deflections equal to 0 0.0242 feet. I'm ready to calculate how much is the total deflection. I should consider delta 1 and total indirect deflection. Um, total deflection would be at, at point D would be delta 1 plus delta prime. And I simply add them together because they are both going in the same direction. So that would be 0 0.145 plus 0 0.0242 which adds up to 0 0.0387 feet going downward. So that would be the final answer of this problem. The way that we are splitting this structure into different parts, you would see that in a repeated number of questions, either in the assignment or in exams. So make sure you understand this trick. Any questions for this problem? 